What's up guys, this is Chris here, and we're here with Nick from PewView, and today we are both gonna be shooting the new Sig Rattler LT. This is a six inch variant, the brand new version. It has a little bit extra barrel than the previous one did, but it's meant for the same purpose. It's a 300 blackout PDW with a piston system with AR controls. Very low silhouette, you're still packing 20 rounds of uh, sub or supersonic, which if you're doing a 300 blackout video, I feel like you have to shoot both. That's kind of the idea, right? Yeah, for sure. It, uh, for you two, this is a 10 round magazine. He was just kidding. Six and a half. <laughs> Six and a half round for the YouTube reviewer. So the idea behind this is that Special Forces picked a bunch of these up, at least that I'm aware. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. You always do anyway. They picked these up because it's kind of a sentry gun. Like it's great for a PDW for a civilian, but the actual application, the military, at least what I hear, is they carry them with them and you can run sub or super. And the new SIG optics actually have two different reticles so you can switch back and forth because they're gonna have a different point of aim, point of impact. If you run subsonic, you can use one reticle to engage the heads of zombies in case they're, you know, patrolling on a wall or something like that. And you can be very, very quiet. And then if you wanna kick in a door and go supersonic, you can go loud and have a lot more damage per round. So subsonic is what we're gonna be running mostly today. We have some S and B, we have some Federal 220, and then we also have some Winchester 200 grain. So we're gonna be trying that. And then I think we're gonna shoot some supersonic and some ballistics gel too. What are you gonna run for a can on this? I think the Omega 9K. We were gonna run my new uh, Huxworks, but I don't have an adapter for 7.62, yeah. so that sucks. I think the Omega would look pretty good on that. Though. It's gonna look good. It's, it's a little bit shorter, shorter anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the idea behind the gun. The cool part about the MCX, if you're not familiar, is that they are very, very modular, even more modular than the AR. You can take these rails off, take the barrels off, replace the caliber, super easy. And it's a very modular design. And SIG's, you know, coming out of the game, awesome, because they have a lot of features on this. Yeah, you know, it's the full ambi as well. I forgot to mention that. All the controls, the magazine release, the bolt, and the uh, safety are all ambi. So we're gonna go out and shoot it, see what happens. Now we'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Battlehawk Armory. Battlehawk Armory is a family owned and operated store in Grimes, Iowa, but they do ship nationwide. They have amazing prices and carry most, if not all of your favorite gear, including Surefire, Trijicon, Magpul, and many more. We love supporting small businesses that do great work, so please check out Battlehawk. I'd really appreciate it. Since we're both from Iowa, give them some love. And we would like to thank the other sponsor of this video, the Sonoran Desert Institute. The SDI has been a long time sponsor of the channel. We really appreciate them and we really support what they are doing. They are a university that specializes in firearms education. If you wanna get a degree in gunsmithing, drone technology, or anything else associated with firearms, it's never been a better time to be your own boss. So you can go out and start your own business or you can work for one of the quality companies that you've always wanted to. All you have to do is go over and check them out and start your future now. I only had one left. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run these 220 subsonics up close, kind of in the way you would run it for a PDW. So we'll just shoot up close and fast and see how the recoil and pulse and reliability is. Quick, <laughs> like this. All right, we got some pretty gnarly uh, Winchester 220 grain subs. Oh no, the pressure pad fell off. <laughs> That's why you use zip ties. Yeah. <laughs> I pop right back on. Ready? Dalton's taking a turn. <laughs> Woo! What do you think? That's actually nice. Like the recoil, I was expecting more with such a, a piston gun with a short barrel. So was I. That's yeah. the first thing I felt. I was like, here we go, and then nothing. The only thing I didn't like was the amount of flex in this when I'm I hear that. pulling it in. 
I can I can stand to have a larger pistol grip too. I got baby hands. You got big hands. <laughs> it's true. I don't mind this at all. Okay, sexy. All right, so it has ambi controls, bolt release right there. This is kind of the manner in which you'd store it, I imagine. 20 round mag, so it's flush fit. And then if you have a foldy brace or a foldy stock, flip it out. Works. This is mine. <laughs> so now we got supersonic in it. So we're gonna give that a go. We are gonna definitely have a point of zero impact change because we put a suppressor on and we're shooting different ammo. So I'll have to find it first. So it changed the impact about a foot left, but obviously it's still accurate because if you just adjust or get one of that new, those cool new SIG optics, you can have two reticles. Okay. Yeah, it, uh, the uh, up and down is the same, but I was definitely a foot left. I was okay. aiming on the a little like two inches off the left side of the target. I gotta say that looks about 10 times cooler. At least it's not smoky. I can see really good. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Damn. It's like going right into the optic, so it just looks like I'm shooting through fog. <laughs> you might need to know how to do that someday. Jesus. That's a lot. Getting it primed, you know? How many handsome men does it take to put up a ballistic gel target? So this is clear ballistic gel. This is a torso. Lieutenant Dan. And then we have it very professionally ratchet strapped to a target stand, which hopefully I will not shoot here soon. And then we're going to test uh, subsonic first. We have the 200 grain Winchester and then the 220 cellar and Bellet. So we'll try those. And then when those fail to impress us, we'll shoot it with uh, Hornady Supersonic. Is that an FMJ or Super FMJ? That's still yeah. a hollow point? That'll be this interesting. This is a subsonic, uh, whatever you would call that, you know, micro little, little hollow point. Up. And then we have a uh, defensive subsonic round. So we'll try that. All right. 200 grain, Winchester subsonic first. Went right through and out the other side, but it does have a little bitty corkscrew wound channel. A two by four took that. <laughs> Did it go through? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So it went through the gel and through the two by four. Now just cheap subsonic S and B. We'll see if that makes any difference or whether it's really worth it to buy subsonic self-defense ammo. We shot through the same hole. Pretty much. They crisscrossed. I gotta stop shooting so good. I mean, uneventful, but it would kill you. Yeah. I mean, that wouldn't feel great. I'm curious as to what a 45 ACP at this distance would do comparatively to that. Well, I think if I want to try, we should try it. Yeah, I think a hollow point would actually stop and deliver energy rather than just punch right through. through. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. So now we have some Hornady self-defense ammo. I don't remember exactly what it is, but I'll annotate it. But it's gonna be supersonic, so I think because of that, it's gonna do a lot more damage. 
We'll see. That is yes. There we go. Now that's what you want right there. That's better. Oh, wow. Man, that is quite the wound channel. That doesn't suck. Now to make it a little more realistic, I'll shoot it the way I would actually shoot it. <laughs> That's your wound channel. Whoa. So when you think about 300 blackout, remember that it does subs and supersonic. So if you want to do this, just up the velocity. <laughs> <laughs> you see the ballistic tips? Like yeah. all the tips uh -huh. in there? So now we're going to try a few different calibers just to compare. And I'm up with the new Ruger 45 ACP and we have 180 grain American Eagle. At least I think it is. It's American, it's American Eagle 45 ACP. And they're only full metal jackets, sadly, not hollow points because I don't actually have any 45 hollow points available. I know. Is that a safety? Weird. I just figured I'd put two off the side a little bit. I mean, that's legit for a full metal jacket. Look at the little pedals. <laughs> that's not bad. That's not bad. The way it looked when it impacted was kind of similar before you busted out the supersonic. Did it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's like what, 220 grain versus 180 grain, so it's not much different, and subsonic is only one speed. So, you know, it's really, if you're shooting subsonic, it's usually about 900 feet, 1,000 somewhere in there, and they just up the grain. Dalton, what do you got? <laughs> we have the new Staccato XL Gold. We're gonna shoot the 147 grain SIG. Yeah, they are the Elite Defense, and that's what I carry. So I know it's a handgun, but most PDWs are five inch anyway, so I figured why not. You want a little left? Uh, yeah, just somewhere else. Damn. Nice. Damn. I mean, I'll take that over the 45. I know we're just firing hollow, I mean, that's a hollow point nine versus a FMJ 45, which is not an easy, even comparison, but look at that fucking shit. That's yeah. a decent channel. You can see where it started to slow down and like had no energy coming out the back. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what you want. You want full dump so right. you don't get a lot of over penetration and hit people you don't want to hit. Yeah, like these, you can tell they're still cruising by the time they get out the back. But by, by the fact they went through the two by four? <laughs> yeah. <that. laughs> All right, now we're going to compare it to the SIG 77 hollow point five five six. I assume this is probably going to be quite a bit better than anything we've tried. More so dramatic, far. I bet. Yeah. Just go high, go high left or high right, whichever. Yeah. <laughs> For, if anybody's wondering, he's holding my home defense gun. That's okay. And that's what my home defense ammo would do. <laughs> That is legit. <clears throat> Look at all the copper pedals. 5.56 five, for the wind, always. <laughs> I 
Oh, I only gave you two rounds? No, I oh, think failed. I had a hammer ball. Sweet. So, in conclusion, or at least so far, what did we shoot? 200 plus rounds through today. We shot subs, supers, shot a bunch of different kind of grain. And, I mean, it functioned well. I agree. I mean, it's reliable. It's accurate-ish. What's the price point on these? I think a little over 2K, maybe 2005. So it's it's uh, it's expensive. Well, I think it's better than like a DI AR-15 chambered in 300 blackout. I think the MCX is much better. Sure. I like 300 blackout for shorter barrels too. That's one thing we didn't necessarily touch on. But 300 blackout does have its disadvantages as well. I mean, it's twice the price. And if you go super, you get more damage on the 300 blackout. But if you go super on 5.56, you get the same damage, if not maybe a little better sometimes. And on top of that, it's half the price. Right. So 300 blackout certainly is a niche cartridge, but I think for like a PDW, I mean, I really like this thing. It's short, it's fast. You can fold it, which is really, really nice. And you don't have to have one of the, uh, the folding adapters for a buffer tube that add complexity. And then they also add a little weight, whereas this thing's really, really light. And obviously, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like the AK perfected with AR controls. The, the 300 blackout all day over any AK platform yeah. ever? Cause yeah, yeah. America, but. <laughs> well, I agree. Well, just the controls are better. Obviously the gun sure. looks super cool too, which is really yeah. nice. That's important for self-defense. It has to look very cool. Oh, that's 10 points. Yeah. But I mean, if you consider without the suppressor, fold the uh, brace or the stock system, the shorty uh, grip with the shorty mag. I mean, you really can hide that in a bag. You can hide it under a shirt and you can pop it out and have very similar performance to a 5.56 gun, at least closer than a nine or something like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. And for its intended purpose, as far as like Suppressed. actual use in the military, for sure. I can see why you would want a gun that can be very, very quiet and then almost as lethal as a 5.56, you know, at the blink of an eye and a magazine switch. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, I think that's where uh, 300 blackout really shines is ability to be suppressed versus 5.56. I mean, if you, if you can't really be quiet with a 5.56. Have you ever used subs in 5.56? It, but it's a 22 long they, rifle. They, they don't work point. terribly yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're better shooting off. a 22. If you're gonna go subsonic, you're definitely better off with this. 100%. If you guys want to see more of Nick, you can find him at PewView on Instagram and on YouTube. We'll leave his links below. He's a pretty awesome shot and he does all kinds of cool reviews as well. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel if you like this and want to see more. Please help out your local home shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Are you guys helping me or are you just causing trouble? <laughs> <laughs>